The Sega machines we have tested so far in the series has been mostly a success, with a few quibbles along the way. And a number of you have asked, is it always going to be a Sega console being experimented on? Well, that's an interesting question. If I was to ask you to name another family console to trial, I bet the very first franchise that rushes to your mind is Nintendo. Ah, Sega's number one rival in the 90s, Mario vs Sonic. You wouldn't see Mario on a Sega contraption or vice versa. Sonic didn't cross to the dark side until December 2001. But what if he debuted onto the Red Company even earlier? How would have his escapade turn out? Well, Pablo's Corner and his team have started a reimagining of Sonic Adventure for the Nintendo 64. As long as you have the memory size option set to 8 megabytes in the emulator of your choice, you've got a new demo to experience in the palm of your keyboards or whatever. That's all good and all, but does it work on real hardware? It's about time that I picked up one of these, the EverDrive 64X7, the top dog to play N64 ROMs on original hardware. So today's game on the agenda is Sonic Adventure 64, a ROM hack of Super Mario 64, the best selling game ever for its dedicated console. I've played this before on my channel where I said, so I've been told that this doesn't work on real hardware, but then I had people saying that it should. But enough jibber jabber, the version I am testing on is a PAL contraption with the model number NUS001, using the latest model of Crix EverDrive, updated to the newest firmware version 3.03. Ok, so here we are at the EverDrive menu, and I thought for the very first test, we'll try without the expansion pack, just to see what happens. So, I've got Sonic Adventure 64 here, and I'll select and start that, and loading. Ah! Ah! Now this doesn't look good. Um, I don't know if you can see my uh, capture card here, but... It's not liking it either. Oh, right, no, no, my frame moisture really does not like it. It's just on no input, and that's it. Whereas my PVM just seems to be flickering over and over. It's as if it hasn't quite detected a sync signal. Um, but then again, this was without the expansion pack, so let's try it with it. Okay, so this is with the 8 megabytes of memory of RAM, so we're going to try that again, and hopefully we'll see a game. Uh, oh, oh. Um, uh, sort of an improvement. We very barely got to see the Sonic title screen go across, and that's it. That's all it's done. Yeah, again, my frame meister is just not having any of it. Uh, the game hasn't done anything else. Hmm. I've tried diverse ways of patching the ROM, and even downloaded the already reinforced game from the official source, so I knew I couldn't mess it up. And even then, nothing! Ah! Not a great start, but there's multiple methods we can still try to turn this around. The X7 has an auto detection feature to see which region you are using, and maybe it just can't quite lock on? So, I went ahead and acquired the downgraded edition of Crix's product, the EverDrive 64 version 2.5. It lacks a few gimmicks compared to its big brother, but nothing that's going to bother us at this point. What we're interested in is this little switch right here. This is the PAL slash NTSC switcher, giving us full control over what region is being used. Let's shift it to PAL mode first, and give it a shot. I thought, just for completionist's sake, I'll try the jumper pack first before we go into the expansion pack, and let's see what it does. Right, here we are in the EverDrive menu, looking a bit different. Uh, Sonic Avenger 64, load and start please. Um, I'm not expecting this to work without the memory pack. Yeah, it's doing the flickering again, uh, which means probably with it. Well, let's find out. Alright, so I've just switched to the memory pack, I've stuck that in, and let's see, I'm really f hoping, fingers crossed, no, no, it's flickering again. And there goes the total screen. Yeah, 
Okay, so the exact same issue as what we were having with the X7. So let's try manually putting that switch to NTSC. Okay, so NTSC mode, I flick the switch. Let's turn on the console. Do something. Oh no, 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 no. So it doesn't mean per game, it means the switch has to be representing the actual console. So that means NTSC with this cartridge is never going to work. I have to leave it in PAL. Well, that was a waste of time. Okay, time to bring out the big guns. <laughs> Sorry, what you're looking at here is the Japanese revision of Nintendo's beauty. Seeming as Sonic Adventure 64 is built off the NTSC ROM, this may be the key to booting up the title. Alright, so here we are with the NTSC console and... Oh, that already looks beautiful, it's taking up the whole screen. Ooh, yes. Anyway, I get a little bit carried away. Let's go into the Sonic games, and this is again without the memory expansion pack, just for completion's sake. Uh, we're going to go select start. So I'm not expecting this bit to work. Although that's not a good sign, it still looks like it's having sync issues. Alright, okay. Moment of truth. Here goes nothing. Uh, Sonic Adventure 64, come on, come on. Come on, I can feel it, I can feel it. I... Cannot feel it. It no. Ah! No, not yet. Not yet. I, 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 I'm still determined. I can do this. So I was just taking a quick look at the download pack, and there seems to be some codes, some Game Shark codes. Oh my! This is going to take a while to input in. Now I don't know what these actually do. Physics part 1 and 2, well I'm guessing that's when you're in game, but message code, uh, I don't know, worth a try. Oh my, you have no idea how tedious this is, oh, just remember me for doing this, oh, all done. I've put in most of the codes, but there was about 3 or 4 that I couldn't put in because well, I've run out of room, I'm not physically allowed to put any more Game Shark codes in. But, I mean, this should work. Let's start it. If this doesn't do it. Ah! Even the title has disappeared now, it's not even doing that. Ah! I've, the codes have made it worse. Oh, I am really determined to get this working, and my only technique now is to try on a USA system. Regrettably, getting a North American system would be expensive, and I would still have to pay the dear price of shipping, and then import tax would bite me on the bottom. It wasn't a viable option. Hmm, I wonder if a friend of mine can help me out with this. Let's just, uh... Give him a call, shall we? No. Hey, Red Hat Sonic. What's up? Hey, Corey. I hope you're well. I'm the terrible pickle, mate, and I just can't seem to get this Sonic ROM hack to work on my European or Japanese Nintendo 64. I was wondering... Oh, yeah. I could definitely check that out for you using the EverDrive 64 version 3 and X7. So, how do you want me to capture that? Do you want it via RF? Composite, S Video, or how about RGB? Wow. Or even using the HD RetroVision component cables. Well, yeah, that... Do you want that blurred or de blurred? And if you do want me to de blur it, should I see if I can get it to work with a Game Shark code or something? Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. What about the open source scan converter? Do you want that line tripled, quadrupled, or quintupled? Do you want me to use the RetroTink 2X? Oh, how about the RetroTink 2X Pro? Yeah, cool. But, um... Do you want me to use the smoothing filter that it has? Actually, you know what? Let me guess. You want me to use the Ultra HDMI mod? Corey, you can capture it in any way you like. We're just interested in the results. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Alright, so check it out. I use the Nintendo 64 model NUS001, which is a US launch unit. 
equipped with the memory pack expansion, and I couldn't get the ROM hack to load on either the EverDrive 64 version 3 or the X7. So, looks like you're out of luck. Sorry. Ah, oh, that's a shame. Thanks for trying though, Corey. I know I'm boiling the ocean here, but I wonder if an EverDrive 64 2.5 on a USA system could help. Well, one of my sponsors was able to assist. By the means of an OSSC, it mimics what my Sony PVM does. Which is not good news. It just doesn't want to initiate. But then, finally, I had one great idea. I gave up. I'm sorry. Does Sonic Adventure 64 work on real hardware? No. From this point, what you're viewing here is emulation footage, but oh man, what a disappointment. This is the first ever episode where no victory was to be found, despite extensive testing. Nonetheless, it was fun shaking this game by the scruff of the neck, but it just wouldn't budge. For now, the only way to play this is through emulation, and for a demo, it's certainly worth checking out. As of right now, Sonic 64 just has too much blast processing going on. I guess you can say that Nintendo don't. <laughs>